There are few families as well known serving in business across multiple industries that are as generous and well loved as the Piconi family. From humble beginnings, the Piconi family are now in their fourth generation. They continue to punch well above their weight in terms of their contribution to the local economy. From owning a number of IGA grocery stores, bakeries, butcheries, hotels, residential developments and some of the largest fruit farms in Australia, the family of six children are acutely aware of the importance of supporting local business to keep the regional circular economy flourishing. We caught up with the oldest member of the family, 86-year-old Louis Piconi, at his Edmonton home to find out his secret to family business success and why his mantra has always been one of giving to those around him. He reflects on a very fruitful career, having started work in his parents' business at just six years of age. Well, I always worked with mum and dad as a kid when we had the bagger shop and the butcher shop, so I was used to working in a business because I you know, worked hard with them when I was a child. During the Depression and World War II, his family struggled and his mother Anna wanted desperately to return to Italy to see her family. But his father would only go if Louis returned home from his engineering job to look after the business. What was meant to be a three-month holiday for his parents turned out to be almost two years, as Louis's ability to grow the business shone through. He increased revenue by 1,100% in just 18 months. His career as an engineer brought abruptly to a close, as he admits to having fallen head over heels in love with cans and the people who walk through the doors of his shop each day. Oh, well, find me a better place in the world, right, to start. And, and it's just so casual, you know, uh, it's just so wonderful a place to live. I know we do get humidity and all that sort of stuff, but nowadays it's pretty easy because we get, we've got air conditioning and all those luxuries. Uh, but it's just the people. You know, we, we, we have such a mixture of wonderful people. You know, I love people. The mantra, give and you shall receive, could have been written for the Piconi family. Their net worth as a family enterprise, although undisclosed, is significant. But for a wealthy Far Northern dynasty, they are also one of the biggest charitable contributors in the community, giving hundreds of thousands of dollars each and every year to local sporting groups, charities and many other worthy causes. Yes, I've always told my family, we live in the community, they give us our support, and therefore we should support our community. And that's what I've always been about. The size of the man's smile, a direct reflection of his big heart. Uh, the joy of giving. You know, uh, it's, we do get benefit. But for years we gave and didn't get any benefit. It took a long time for the public to wake up. But my sons have done a very good job. And I and my sons, anyone in my family, they've all got big hearts, you know, a whole lot. And they all give a lot of themselves to other people. So that's what we've been taught. And that, that's the, um, the culture of the Piconi family. It's just, we're all here to help each other. From a young adult, son John has managed the finances of the family companies. His brother Peter made it very clear that he wasn't interested in paperwork and was best placed on the shop floor. John jokes about how they both realised each other's strengths from day one. Peter asked me to look after the bills, the invoices, so I turned up for work and he said, OK, you pay the bills. And we had this old desk and it had two drawers in it and the top drawer were all these invoices and they were nice and just flat. No, no organisation, no order or anything, and then I pulled open the bottom drawer and they were all crumpled up, you know, like papers crumpled up, and I said, what's the, what's the story here? Peter, he said, well, the ones in the top drawer, they've got to be paid, the ones in the bottom drawer that are crumpled up, they've been paid, so, <laughs> so the first thing I did was go out and buy a second-hand filing cabinet and put files in and alphabetical and everything and started from there. It seems that knack for growing revenue runs in the blood. 
the boys have been at the forefront of major growth since taking over the reins. We've, we've come a long way in 20 years, you know, 30 years, I think, yeah, 30 years now. Geez, it goes so quick, you don't realise. So in 30 years we've gone from, you know, a little, a little turnover to uh, a large turnover. Their father attributes a lot of the success to focusing on the human element of business. He says despite the advances in technology and many other facets, the fundamentals remain unchanged. In our business, dealing with the public, the first step is recognition. When you see someone who walks into your establishment, you say good day. Regardless whether you know them or not, you say good day. That breaks all the ice of the world 99.99% of the time. When you broach the subject of buying local, you can tell it's a topic he feels very strongly about. A lot of people think that the big guys are cheaper than we are. But you know, no. If you go to the whole shop, there's so much difference. His sons echo his sentiments and are keen to remind people that in tough times, locals support locals. We should just always say, what can I do to do my part in the community? And th if that also means trying to support the local community with local businesses and whether it's local farmers or lo local people, local charities, because that it all makes a little bit of difference. You might think, oh, it's not going to make much difference what I've done. Yes, it does, because in the end, if you make a person feel better about themselves and make them feel um, uh, should I valued, you'd be amazed at how they respond. Because like Dad said in his interview, you say g'day and you say, I'm, I'm here, I'll do my best to try to give you a hand. They're the people that support you and they're the people that will be there for you in times of need, you know, and, and we've seen that recently with the bushfires and, and everything, how the Australians have dug deep and given all that money to help, you know, and it's, it's just part of the Australian way. And we like to look after each other. We've always liked to look after each other. So it's human nature. So the more that we can become involved in the local community, the more success you're going to have. And the more that you give back, and the more that you uh, help other people, the, the better life is, you know, as far as you know, I, I enjoy being there for other people, whether it's personally or in business, okay? Um, I help wherever I can and that's from our family, our whole family. There are more modern techniques nowadays, you know, and you know, there's all that sort of stuff. But at the same token, it's different but it's still the same. It doesn't matter who people are, right, you've got to respect them when they come to your establishment, give them good service and recognition. One of Louis's most cherished moments in business, not surprisingly, is a time that involves his staff, when shops weren't open seven days a week and people had more time to spend with their family and friends. And despite being in his late 80s, fully retired and battling a few health issues, Louis still keeps his finger on the pulse. He maintains his home office with a direct phone line to his sons, so he can call them each day to check on the company's operations. At my age, I'm still answering to my father, but that's okay because um, I love him and, and it's important that um, uh, without him, we wouldn't be where we are. So he gave us the opportunity, we grabbed it with both hands and, and, and uh, we've just got on. You know? As a parting piece of advice to anyone in business or anyone in a job they're not fond of, Louis Picconi has these words of wisdom. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, get out. And I've come across so many businesses in my life where the people who are there keep on whinging about their business and don't really like it. It's just like a job. You know, if you came to work for me and you couldn't smile, you didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't want you there. So you're better off going and finding something else you like doing. Simple as that.